Hello, welcome back to the channel, and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. I generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about an Ameritrash game that was released in 2015. We're going to be talking about Conan, the board game. And in this game, you will be taking on the role of characters from the books. You'll be selecting a scenario. You'll be hacking and slashing your way, trying to complete the scenario that will allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We're telling you what we do like, we don't like. Then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Conan, the board game, is still worth playing six years after it was first released. So remember, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. Hit the like button and all that shit. We'll see you after this. So, Conan, how do you play this game? So, Conan is a turn based mirror trash game. It's got loads and loads of miniatures in it. You're going to select a scenario from the overall book and then you'll set up the scenario like the book tells you to, right? So, this game consists of alternative turns. You have the hero's turn and then you'll have the overlord's turn. This is a one versus all game. What will happen is the heroes will take all their turns until oh, they run out of stamina crystals or they're just fed up and don't want to do nothing else. And then the overlord will take their turn. You'll go back and forth until either the heroes win the scenario or the heroes lose the scenario. So there are four different phases in the hero's turn. There is the start phase, you've got the stance phase, you've got the action phase and the end phase. Each player is going to have a player board that represents their abilities, their abilities to move, their abilities to manipulate stuff, their ability to re-roll dice, right? So the next phase is the stance phase. This will be the portion of the game where you will determine whether or not your character is going to be a mean bastard or they're just going to sit back on their ass and rest. What you'll do, you'll move the crystal to either the aggressive stance or you'll move it to the cautious stance. If you move it to the cautious stance, all you'll be able to do is defend, right? So it's something you've got to be mindful of, but in being cautious, you'll also be able to regenerate more stamina. So the next thing that you'll do is you'll go into the meat and potatoes of the game, you'll go into the action phase, and this is where you'll be transferring gems from your stamina pool onto the different attributes on your player board, right? So the first action you can do is the melee attack, where you do you move any number of crystals from your pool onto the icon and you'll see that there's a number that tells you the maximum amount of stamina crystals that you can dump on here and then for each crystal that you put on there you'll receive one die of the color that's listed on your player board right so it stands to reason that the more crystals you put on the icon the more chance you've got of causing a load of havoc so next thing you could do is a ranged attack this is the same sort of thing and put gems onto the icon on your player board but this time you'll be able to trace a line of sight from the little target in your space to the target icon of the monster that you want to try and cut their balls off again you'll receive one die for each crystal that you have put here so again the more crystals you dump here the harder you are going to be so the next action you can do is the guard action this is when you are attacked you can choose to take the guard action for every crystal you dump on here you'll get a die and you'll be able to roll it and you'll be able to take the number of axes that you get away from the attack strength of the monster that's trying to kill you so the next thing you can do is you can try and manipulate stuff around you you've got two types of manipulation you've got simple manipulations you've got complex manipulations when you perform a simple manipulation you'll just take a crystal from your pool place it on the manipulation space and you will be able to perform the manipulation action if you try and perform a complex manipulation you'll get one die for each crystal that you dumped on the icon and the requirements of the complex manipulation are always determined by what the scenario is thrown at you so you'll have to look at the specific scenario for the number of axes you're gonna to have to get right so next thing you could do you could dump a crystal on uh, the re-roll icon this will allow you to re-roll one of your dice and then you've also got the move icon if you see you've got a number that's in bold this is the amount of free movement spaces you get before you're required to dump crystals on that space and basically you'll just be able to move to an adjacent space so some of the characters have got access to spells which is pretty good right you'll see that each spell has a requirement of crystals that you're gonna have to move onto the spell card and then you will cast the spell funny old thing so once you've all finished taking your actions then you'll go to the end phase and you'll move any crystals 
that you used that turn into the fatigue space on your player board, right? So there is a really important concept called hindering. Basically what this means is if there's enemy figures that are equal or more than the number of friendly characters in the space, then you will lose one axe icon on any action that you are trying to do. Similarly, if you're trying to move out of space, you're gonna to have to spend more movement points to get out of a space that's got too many enemy monsters in it, right? So once the players are done taking their turns, then it is the Overlord's turn. The Overlord's turn is sort of similar, but it's a little bit different. The Overlord's got this thing called the Book of Skelos or Skelos or whatever. The scenario will tell you to populate the book with certain monsters that are related to the scenario, right? You'll see also that you've got a recruitment value of one through eight, and this means that you'll have to pay that many crystals to activate that character so like the heroes phase the overall gets the recovery phase where it'll be moving crystals into their pool that means that these crystals are available for use right you will then go into the activation phase where you'll be able to activate one or two tiles in the river this is where all the tiles are available like we said you'll pay the number of crystals that the book tells you to and then you'll pick up the tile and you'll move it to the end of the river and slide everything else down so the tile that you've just used then becomes more expensive if you want to use it again in that turn yeah if you activate the raven card then this will trigger either some regeneration points or it will trigger something that the scenario dictates to you and the overlord does have the option of using the three icons at the top of the book of skelos by placing attributes on this so the overlord be able to maybe move some characters extra spaces do a bit of re-rolling or maybe add a few dice to the defense so combat is really really simple in this game basically what you'll be doing you'll be choosing over the ranged attack or the melee attack and then you'll take that number of dice you roll them and you'll count up the number of axe icons that are on the dice that you've rolled then it goes to the defender they will choose to use the guard action and you'll be able to use some equipment like shields and stuff that's going to add extra dice to your pool the defender will roll all their dice in their pool and you will subtract the number of axe icons that they got from the attack value of the attacker. And this is the amount of damage that they will cause. If the monster is dead, it will be removed from the board and some characters will actually come out of the river and it's up to the overall to then resurrect them. So each of the characters has different types of skills. They've got attack skills, they've got movement skills, defense skills, and also miscellaneous skills. So for instance, your character might have the attack from beyond attribute. And this says, when using a skill, a character ignores penalties from unarmed attacks and cannot benefit from melee attack bonuses from weapons. You might end up with wall wrecker. And this one says, when a character uses a skill, they spend spend two additional movement points and place a wall wrecker token on the board to indicate the opening they have created. So this allows you to smash through walls and basically cut down on the amount of movement points you are gonna spend. Or you might have sacrifice. And this one says a character using this skill can defend against the incoming attack only using their armor, super duper, right? So keep doing this, keep going backwards and forwards. You'll be attacking, you'll be using different skills. There's also something called encumbrance, which means you could pick stuff up. But if you pick up too much stuff, you'll lose the ability to use some of your special skills, right? So you've got to be mindful of that. But you'll keep doing this, going backwards and forwards until you've either reached the round limit, which is normally eight rounds, or the heroes have fulfilled the objectives of the scenario. And in which case, they will win the game or maybe lose the game if they fuck it up. You know what I mean? So what do we like? about Conan, the board game. First thing that we like about this game is that it's such a simple system, isn't it? You are just gonna be taking a different number of crystals, dumping them on icons, taking the action, right? There's some right neat choices to be made, whether or not you're going to rest and take the cautious stance or whether you are gonna just go hell for leather and try and kill as much in sight. And you do get that feeling, like in the Conan books and in the Conan movies where Conan just goes, completely and utterly apeshit and just slices his way through hordes of monsters. That is really, really well implemented in this game, yeah? So just be prepared for like Shogun Assassin style death. So the next thing that we really like about Conan that it is unapologetically faithful to its source material. It doesn't leave anything out. It doesn't leave anything to the imagination. And it's almost like it's sticking two fingers up at the... Uh, groups of people that may or may not have a problem with this game. It's about time that some developers just stood up for themselves and said, no, nah, this is what we're going to do. If you don't like it, don't buy it. And Conan has this attitude in spades. It doesn't compromise for anything. And like we said, it's just a case of if you don't like what's in the box, 
then don't go anywhere near it, innit? So the, the next thing that we really like about Conan is the minis are really, really detailed. And there's a lot of them, okay? A lot of these miniatures are just replicas of each other and you're going to be putting the sort of Blood Rage style coloured bases on. But if you look at the snake, for instance, it, it's richly detailed. The Jackal miniatures are also really, really good. And it's just nice to see some sculpts that aren't big blobs of plastic like project elite right but we've only got the core set of this but if you look at some of the miniatures from the kickstarter edition they're just out of this world yeah for a miniatures game this really really is pretty good stuff so the final thing that we really like about conan is the book of skelos is really really refreshing the fact that they've actually chucked this into corset it could have just been a load of cards that were on the table but no they've gone the extra mile and they've actually sculpted a plastic tray that you can use it really does set the overlord apart from the other players right i also like the way that the river is implemented you've got that really nice choice of do you embellish the monster that you're using at that time by allowing it to move more spaces or doing more rerolls, or do you save up the gem so you can activate that character twice in the next turn right so it's really really well implemented it looks absolutely fantastic and yeah book of skelos super duper right so what don't we like about conan first thing that we don't like about conan is that the number of scenarios in the core book is admirable but there's just not enough for each player count there's only like one scenario for two players and if you want to play with five there's only about two scenarios that you can try so this game is geared towards four players it sort of just pushes the other player counts out the way it just would have been nice to have had more ways to adapt all the scenarios for each player count rather than just having you know say four players maximum or two players maximum in the book yeah so it's a bit disappointing so the next thing that we don't like about conan is that the fact we've got two rule books that really is annoying because there's some rules that you need to know in the overall book and some rules that you need to know in the player book right and it just would have been nice to have had the option to maybe put these two books together just don't really like the flipping backwards and forwards trying to find the rule that you want and if you add to this the fact that the rule book is quite obtuse with some of its wording it's not really that clear on what you're meant to be doing and when and if you add to that as well some of the loose wordings with some of the skills can be a little bit annoying so just make sure that you have got the second printing of the rule book the 2.0 version because that allegedly does clarify some of the confusion right so the next thing that we don't like about conan is that some of the representations in the game may upset certain groups of people and that's not a problem for me i couldn't give a monkey's fuck about that but if some people in your group are easily wound up by certain representations in games then this isn't going to be a game that you're going to be able to play with those people because it can be interpreted as being quite overtly sexualized or just playing on attitudes that some groups don't find acceptable in this day and age. so yeah just be aware of that when you're going into this one Know what I mean? So the final thing that we don't like about Conan is that the cost of this game is really, really prohibitive. If you are picking this up brand new, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. And I'm not sure that there's enough content in this box to warrant that outlay. What we did, we went and picked up the French version, which is largely language independent. We downloaded the Vassal module for it, opened that up, took the spell cards, printed them off and just put them in sleeves. Yeah, so now we've got a full English breakfast version of Conan which is really good for the price of, I think it's like 20 quid in a bargain bin. So yeah, happy days. So to summarise, is Conan the board game still worth playing six years after it was first released? We're going to say yes, this is an excellent one versus all hack and slash mirror trash game. It suffers from a distinct lack of scenarios in the core cool rulebook for varying player counts and it does contain certain images that certain groups of people may find a little bit difficult to digest having said that it is a really simple and fun game that really doesn't demand too much from its participants and in my mind at least there are loads and loads of occasions where you need a game like this just to alleviate the tension caused by all those mind-bending euros that you haven't played since you started collecting board games you know what i mean so there you go that is conan the board game remember if you're new here please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below hit the like button and all that shit i'll see you next tuesday